Hey guys, it's John V here with Phone Arena, and this is our quick first hands on look at the new Moto Z4. Now, this smartphone kind of is very similar to last year's Z3. In fact, there are many key similarities, but it's kind of interesting how they're really prepping this phone because they say it's a flagship but typically the specs are indicative of what type of device it is. It is running a Snapdragon 675 processor. So just like the Google Pixel 3a, I probably classify it more as a mid-range device than a flagship. Now before I get into the nitty gritty about the phone, I'm gonna talk about the biggest and most pressing thing about the Z4 and that's the price because just like the Google Pixel 3a, it is relatively affordable, but there is a catch. Now, you could buy the phone through Verizon for $500 outright, but if you are a new customer opening a new line and want to pick up the Z4, you're only gonna pay 10 bucks a month for 24 months. So that brings its total cost to $204, which yes, it does undercut the Pixel 3a and a lot of phones in this specs range. But again, if you're not a brand new customer, you're still paying 500 bucks for it. So you may have to think about your options at that point. Now, just like the Z3 last year, the Z4 here is also 5G capable. So if you live in an area that has that, or it's gonna have it very soon, definitely wanna think about getting that. You have to just purchase the 5G Moto Mod. And because of that, the design is a very familiar one. They really don't stray too much from what we've seen in the past. It looks exactly like the Z3. It's a solid construction, pretty much all metal. And uh, the difference here this time around is on the front. If you look here, it actually has an all screen look. So very minimal bezels. There's a teardrop notch, very discreet with the front facing camera. There's a beautiful 6.4 inch OLED display on here, great colors. The other thing you notice here is that there isn't a fingerprint sensor on the back. Instead, it has an in-screen fingerprint sensor, which is nice, definitely. And I also like the fact that it also features a headphone jack. Now, another thing worth talking about here are the cameras. On the back, you have a 48 megapixel camera. Motorola says it's the largest size sensor they put into a phone to date, but they didn't specifically say what the size is. I'm just hoping it's gonna be great, just like the Pixel 3a. It also features quad pixel technology, which combined with its new night vision mode, is gonna offer some really good low light performance, as they say again. Hopefully it's gonna be on par to what all the other phones do out there, like the Pixel 3a, the P30 Pro. So it's gonna be interesting to see how it fares. And then around the front, you have a sizable 28 megapixel camera, which is definitely larger than most others out there. So hopefully it's gonna do really well when it comes to selfies. It's running a mostly stock Android 9 Pie experience, which is nice, but of course you have Motorola's optimizations in there in the form of Moto Display, the Moto Actions. You could quickly launch the camera by twisting the phone a couple times and even turning on the flash if you want to. And it's running pretty fast as far as the navigation across the UI. It's smooth, it's responsive. It is running a Snapdragon 675 processor. So not quite flagship level, I'd say. It is accompanied with four gigabytes of RAM and it's only available in 128 gigabyte capacity, but it does have expandable storage with a micro SD card slot. Going back to what I talked about earlier, the Z4 here is being pegged as a rival to the Pixel 3a. There are a lot of things I like about the phone that has certain advantages over the Pixel 3a. For example, you're gonna get the in-screen fingerprint sensor, you do have expandable storage, and yes, it is 5G capable. And you do also have all those modem mods to choose from, so it has a nice selection right there. But the thing is, the price point, at 500 bucks outright, the normal price for this phone, it's still a tough call. I'd probably still recommend the Google Pixel 3a unless this really blows it out of the water in terms of the performance out of the camera, the battery, the overall responsiveness of the phone. But at 240 bucks for a brand new subscriber to Verizon, that is super attractive and definitely undercuts the Pixel 3a in many aspects. And that is it for a quick hands-on look here at the Moto Z4. If you guys want to learn more about it, you can check out our website, phonearena.com. It's John V, signing off.